needed to talk. After doing a different decoder episode on Wi-Fi 6 a while back, there's a new version of Wi-Fi that we're starting to see pop up on smartphones, laptops, and other devices called Wi-Fi 6E, which, understandably, can be a little confusing. So, in this decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, let's talk about what Wi-Fi 6E is, how it's different from Wi-Fi 6, and what the benefits are. So firstly, what's up with the name? Now, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E are called that because of a collective effort by the Wi-Fi Alliance, the industry body that tests and certifies Wi-Fi products, to help people understand the different Wi-Fi standards. So Wi-Fi 6 is the name for the new 802.11ax standard, where Wi-Fi 5 is the new name for 802.11ac, Wi-Fi 4 is the new name for 802.11n, etc. Wi-Fi 6E is Wi-Fi 6 but the E basically stands for extension. So it's extending Wi-Fi 6 into the six gigahertz frequency band, which we'll discuss in a sec. Okay, so if you want a more in-depth look at what makes Wi-Fi 6 better than Wi-Fi 5, you can check out my Wi-Fi 6 decoder episode at the link below. But in a nutshell, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E use the following over Wi-Fi 5. First, we have MU MIMO, which stands for multiple user, multiple input, multiple output, and it allows multiple clients on the network to send and receive data at the same time, up to eight in Wi-Fi 6 as the standard. And Qualcomm even goes above and beyond the standard and has chipsets capable of 12. We also have OFDMA, or orthogonal frequency division multiple access, to allow for more devices to each receive and send data per transmission. 1024 QAM, which just allows more data to be sent per packet and translates to 25% faster data transfers in Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5. Target wake time to reduce unnecessary network transmission by having devices specify when they'll be awake and transmit versus sleep and not, which then frees up bandwidth for more important data instead, and WPA3, the latest security protocol. It's even backwards compatible with Wi-Fi 6. Any router or device that's using Wi-Fi 6E can just use Wi-Fi 6 if needed, and of course, backwards compatible as well with all the previous versions of Wi-Fi. So what does Wi-Fi 6E add? Well, it adds some much needed spectrum. Right now, your Wi-Fi uses one or both bands, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. And sometimes your router will even display these as two separate networks. While most newer routers will keep the network name the same and automatically decide which band to use for which device. But generally 2.4 gigahertz has a lower top speed of about 0.8 gigabits per second, but a much further range. And five gigahertz has a higher top speed of 2.8 gigabits per second, a lower range. And it's not as good as penetrating objects and walls. Wi-Fi 6E has the same theoretical max speed as Wi-Fi 6 because 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz both use the same size 160 hertz of maximum channel bandwidth. But 6E adds that 6 gigahertz to the mix thanks to the FCC freeing up the frequency band here in the US in 2020 for unlicensed use so that companies can now use it in the same way that they do 2.4 and 5. In fact, it's the biggest spectrum addition to Wi-Fi since 1989. Now that essentially quadruples the amount of bandwidth that Wi-Fi devices can use as it adds 14 additional 80 megahertz channels and seven additional 160 megahertz channels. And while these are the same size channels as five gigahertz, and that's why we have the same theoretical max speed, you can still get faster actual speeds than five gigahertz in some cases, simply because these new channels have way less congestion on them, which also means you'll get much better latency on six gigahertz too. Now congestion and latency on Wi-Fi channels, it what causes those drops in speed as well as issues with buffering in your videos, frame rate drops in games, and dropped Zoom meetings, etc. Essentially, your current devices are all competing for spectrum channels within the 2.4 and five gigahertz bands, including anyone in your family, your roommates, but also people not on your network, like your neighbors. The six gigahertz band gives everyone a much larger swath of spectrum to use within it, but also as more people adopt it, it'll even free up the 2.4 and five gigahertz channels by taking devices off of those and give everyone more breathing room, which right now we're really starting to need as we have a lot more Wi-Fi connected devices in our homes, our workplaces, and so do all of our neighbors. Now, just like we did when five gigahertz was starting out, you're gonna probably prioritize all the devices that need the fastest speeds and the lowest latencies on that six gigahertz channel, and then less and less bandwidth and speed hungry devices on five 
2.5 and then even more so on 2.4. Now, some chipsets like the Qualcomm Fast Connect 6900 can actually use two of those three frequencies simultaneously so that latency issues in any of them can be resolved instantly at a system level without the end user having to do anything or even noticing. Essentially utilizing two Wi-Fi connections at once to give the Wi-Fi connection ethernet-like reliability. Hi, for David, yeah? So, what are the downsides to Wi-Fi 6E? Well, again, we don't have as far of a range, and it's not as good at penetrating walls as 5 gigahertz is, and even more so 2.4 gigahertz. But that's a similar trade-off to even right now, when we use 5 gigahertz over 2.4. It's faster, but the range isn't as good. There's something that's kind of cool that some routers can do, like this Linksys Atlas Max 6E with Qualcomm's Networking Pro 1210 platform in it, is automatically switch devices from 6 gigahertz down to 5 and 2.4 gigahertz as needed. Another downside is the same as with any new technology. Price. Routers that have Wi-Fi 6E in them are generally more expensive than ones that don't. Although that is coming down a lot faster than I expected it to. I'll leave a link below to some of the best Wi-Fi 6E routers I could find. And lastly, availability. You need new hardware in your router and your client devices like your phone or your laptop, etc., to utilize the six gigahertz frequency. You can't just software update them and have them work on it. But already we're starting to see more and more devices, ones that support Qualcomm's Fast Connect 6700 and 6900, like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Z Fold 3, a few different Asus devices, some Xiaomi ones even, and I'm sure we'll see it more and more in other flagship devices down the road. But there you go. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comments below. Also, check out the link below to see what Qualcomm is doing in Wi-Fi 6E. Thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. And as always, thanks for watching.